Welcome back to MCTV Extra Point. I'm your host, CJ Ritchie, and this is my guest, Nick Lucarelli. What's yeah. up? What's up, man? You doing good? How's it going? Yeah, we're going great. We're going to get right off into NHL news. Um, the three teams in the tri-state areas, which we like to focus on, the Flyers, Rangers, Devils, on the middle of the pack while the Flyers are kind of a little below them. They, uh, they have one game less, though, don't they? I'm pretty sure. Uh, yes, yeah, they, they do. do. The Rangers are 9th seed, Devils 10, Flyers are 13th. Mm. Rangers and Devils both have 18 points, the Rangers are above with less games played. What do you, um, what do you, uh, which all three of these teams, who has the biggest problem leaning ahead in this next month? Devils. I think the Devils do. I, I don't think the Devils are good. I mean, I know that's my, that's my expert opinion. Well, I don't, I don't think some, they're very good. The, for all NHL power rankings, which is goals against, penalty kill percentage, goals per game, and goals power play, mm -hmm. they're all under 15, which means they're all under half, which means I don't know how you can be, have this bad of a good yeah. of a record with how bad of your plan. I think, the, I think, quite frankly, it's, I mean, it's really the only, not the only sport. It's the sport where the luck most is involved. I think, quite frankly, they've been play, they were playing tough that first stretch, first ten games. Get some puck luck. And now they're just getting puck luck. Yeah, I think the hockey gods were on their side. And as we know, that doesn't last. It really, who wins the Stanley Cup usually, the, um, usually somewhat involves who has the puck luck in uh, April. So I mean, I just think they had it going in. I don't think they're going to last because you know Corey Schneider is not what they thought he was. He's He's a great goaltender. Well, I mean, he doesn't he, have any relief either. Yeah, well, that's the thing. You know, his defense, you know, Andy Green's not playing well. Their captain, uh, Bryce Salvador, he's just, a, I think he's a minus four and player. he's banged up as he's well. He's banged up. He's usually hurt. So, I also think they're, they're not even close to the kind of team that the uh, Flyers and Rangers are. So, I think they're in trouble. Well, it's funny. You, the got, you got the Flyers. Their goals against and penalty kill percentage are 26th or lower in the league. That's right. 30 fair. teams, 31 teams. The goals per game, they're third, and their penalty, kit, and their penalty power play is fifth. So they're really good at scoring goals and scoring when you're supposed to, but they can't do the opposite, which is their whole, there's a whole problem of their team coming in. And then you have the thing of looking at, you know, Cavalier might come back, would maybe coming into Philly next year, but that really doesn't have the problem because the problem isn't scoring goals. The problem is managing defensive and power plays and all that stuff. I, you know, and I think, I think you'll be happy to hear this. I think they're very correctable. I, really, I think what's most important is the fact that their power play and their penalty kill is hot right now, or maybe not even hot. It's really just sustained. It's sustained success, and I think the other stuff is coachable. It's, it's going to wear out. You know, people have to remember, this is really the equivalent. It's an 82-game season. This is the equivalent to the second game, say, in football. So, you know, it's still early, and there's still things to work out, and I think they're going to be okay. I mean, I don't think anybody should be worried about them being able to bump those numbers up, and hopefully they can keep the same penalty kill power play success because that's the most important thing in the playoffs. Usually, if you look at a game, who had less penalties, who had the most power play goals are usually the team that wins. So that's the most important thing really in hockey if you have to break it down to those kind of statistics. So they're, they're on the right track. I think they'll be okay. Yeah, Voracek and Drew over 20 points already. Yeah, Voracek's a leading goal, a like little leading point scorer. Right Which now. is amazing to see if you can hold that up. Um, going over the Rangers, Dan Boyle still hurt? Still hurt? Now, Dan Boyle's playing. And he's, he's back. He's he, playing a little injured. Well, you know, he's playing injured and he, he had the winning goal last night. Well, not last night, last couple of days, but uh, didn't, as we, as you know, didn't turn out to be a goal. Wacky game in Pittsburgh. But yeah, he's not, uh, he's not back up. You know, when we get our defensemen back, when the Rangers get the defensemen back, it's going to be a nice group together with McDonough coming back. And, you know, you'll have Girardi, Stahl, and Danny Boyle. So it's going to be a great first two lines, but we're still banged up there. Yeah, defense. and if you look at the, like, just the point, the plus and minus, which doesn't really tell you everything, yeah. but Yager is minus. Ryder and Camilleri, their other two top goal scorers for the mm -hmm. Devils are just like one or plus one, plus two. It's just a very bad t I think they are playing very bad. They are the worst of the three, but their record doesn't show it. Yeah, I think, you, I think you have to pick the Flyers, I think. Uh, if, if, you, if you're looking at all three, the Flyers I think have the chance to be the best team out of they got three players over ten points. Their plus minus is fairly high for all of them except the defensemen, and that yeah. comes back to Luke Shen. McDonald's both hurt. Tiemann has the blood clots in his legs. I don't know if he's going to come back this he's year. Probably, he probably won't come back forever. <laughs> he's probably done his career. He's, yeah, least, he's on the wrong side of 30, and he's, uh, he's looking to be a little bad. Um, but Rick Nash is another bright spot. And let's go over the top three teams in each uh, conference. you got Montreal, Tampa Bay, and Pittsburgh. Who would, your, who would you want your team not to play? My, if I'm the average fan? or The, the average fan, yeah. The yeah, average fan? Pittsburgh is the most dangerous team because they, they score the most goals. And Mark andre Fleury is very streaky, which people would say, well, if he's streaky, then you, you don't want to play him. Very hot, though. But he's very hot right now. And if he's, play, if he's playing well, he's as good as anybody in the league. That's just the way it is. The problem with that is that he's not always hot. 
But, you know, with their offense, their first two lines, are, they're like an all-star team. So, they, the average team would not want to face Pittsburgh Penguins. Now, try the same thing in the West. You got Anaheim, St. Louis, or Nashville. I mean, I, don't, I think Nashville's a pretender. I mean, I think, I think St. Louis is the most well-rounded team in the West. Maybe on paper, you know, the games are not played on paper, but maybe on paper the most well-rounded team in the league. I mean, they got that Allen kid playing great in goal. And, I mean, between him and Elliott, they have a nice two, two-man rotation. And, you know, you got Backus. you got Jackman, you got Shattenkirk, you got on the back end, you got Oshie, I mean, Steen, Peter Angelo. So, I mean, they're just really talking about another all-star team. So they're another one that if they're playing to their fullest potential, they're the best team maybe in, in the league, let alone the West. Well, that's certain teams where you think you better not lose. Yeah. Not like you better win. You better not lose because you're too good. But um, one more thing I like to say my NHL Stanley Cup pick, the Islanders who are very – they're young. They're ready. I think it's time. I think it's time. It's about goal timing. And they have not lost an. Uh, they have not lost a game in overtime yet. Oh, they're playing great. You know, we don't talk about them because we don't like them here. But yeah, that, no, no one does. It's just because you know. I think the reason we don't talk about them is the reason why they're not going to win is because they're going to fizzle out. We all know that they've started they hot before. Why not? Why? Because Who's their goalie? Hat to- Who's their goalie? Halleck, man. Yeah, Yaroslav. He's like forty-seven. I mean, so I, is Berdour. It's I, all right. I don't see it. I don't see it. We'll be discussed at a later date. That's our NHL news for today. When we come back, we're talking about Cam with NCAA football. Yeah. First time in a while, we're going to get right into this playoff picture that's uh, starting to pan out. Weird to say, playoff picture. Adopting a new pet is a rewarding experience. And shelter pets make super pets. Your new best friend will steal your heart, bring you happiness and enrich your life for years to come. You can make a difference in the life of an animal. Adopt and bring home a shelter pet today. To find out more, visit the shelterpetproject.org. Oh, those boys are much too much. Those boys are much too much. We got the spirit, we're hot, we can't be stopped. We got the spirit, we're hot. We can't be stopped. We're going to beat them and bust them. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. Welcome back to MCTV Extra Point. I'm your host. And now we're back with uh, Cameron Watkins. What's up? Hey, guys. How are Sammy's you? Sammy's doing well. His brother's kind of riding the pine for the Eagles. We're now <laughs> going to talk about where they came from, NCAA college football, where I'm going to see we got FSU, the rankings now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. FSU, Alabama, Oregon, Mississippi State, TCU. Who is your go-to team out of these top five? Do you really think Jameis Winston can better than these teams? I don't. No, I, I'm, not, I'm not trusting Florida State at all. You know, their strength of schedule. But the 10-0. Their, their strength of schedule is, is just weak. What do you mean? They have two games they play, they play in the ACC. You know, they don't have any competition. You know, they're playing, um, they just beat Miami, you know, which probably has given them the best competition out of this entire season. You know, which is play. embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I feel like Miami should have beat them. You know, Brad Kaya, he, he put. He, he played he, well enough to win. I, it wasn't I, his I, fault. I feel, I feel like he put up um, a really good fight against them in the first half. You know, I feel like, um, those Miami receivers, you know, they didn't capitalize. You know, one one of their Miami receivers. Um, he's not I, Santana Moss anymore. Yeah, he's so not I Santana don't, Moss I don't exactly. You know, one, former of the, jet. one of the Miami receivers. You know, he had a really good thir- thirty yard catch. And you know, got up the field and you know in, inside the twenty five yard line, got the ball stripped from him. And you know that was a really costly turnover for them. So. Yeah. Well, that's where these new college kids don't understand to hold on to the ball, like Josh Huff from the Eagles. People on Felden don't understand to hold on to the ball, well, let alone these idiot college kids. Well, moving on. <laughs> Alabama beats Mississippi State in dramatic fashion this past weekend. Yeah. Pretty, handled, pretty yeah. handled win, I yeah. thought. Yeah. Well, dramatic for Alabama. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Oregon, Mississippi State, and TCU. I'm picking Oregon to win the national championship wow. because of Mariota's just really? best quarterback out of all five of these guys. I think I I think the best quarterback. I, 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 know, I, know, I know you're standing by, um, in the top I know you're standing by Sims from um, I'm Alabama. I'm standing by Sims. You're I mean, by Sims. maybe not right now, but in a year, year and a half, when I think he's a redshirt he's junior. A, he's a redshirt junior, yes. Yeah. I think he's going to be the best quarterback. Did you misconstrue my football? words when I said the top five teams right now, best quarterback is Mariota? And that's all that matters when the top five. I think Sims is the best quarterback. I think he's going to be the he's best quarterback. He's redshirted, isn't he? I don't know. He's playing right now. He's a redshirt, which means he has another year Redshirt, fra- okay. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, think, I think he's the best quarterback. I think he's the best team. I think you have to, If you one-on-one situation, I don't think Oregon's um, playing style is going to handle 
with Alabama. You know, a lot of people are talking about how the front 3-4 type of defense Alabama plays with traditional football isn't holding up because it's the whole Chip Kelly type of offense. I don't think it's the exact same. They don't do the same type of tempo, but the same type of play calling isn't going to hold up. That's the new way of the football, that sort of thing. But I think Alabama is by far the best team. And that's why it's great we can prove it now with the playoff system. You know, I feel like these um, TCU Horn Frogs, you know, Trevon Boykin, I feel like he's going to be a sleeper going into it. I'm not picking him to win the national championship, but I do feel like they're going to be a sleeper team come playoff time. So I think they have a better chance than Mississippi State. You do have to keep an eye out for them. Yeah, I think Dak Prescott's the, uh, he's not very good. So SEC title game, who wins? SEC title game? You know, it's tough to say right now. You know, anybody can win the SEC. Well, I'll say anybody can win. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. well who do you think? I feel like I feel like what I feel right now, the SEC West, they need to take their they need to take all the teams in that division and just create their own conference because they just beat up on everybody. But the team that's gonna win the SEC, from what I've seen out of that Alabama, Mississippi, I'm gonna go with Alabama. Alabama. You got to, I think I agree. And I don't really think any other division can be contested, any other conference can be contested by any other team. Oh, except for your, your buddies at Oregon. I don't think so. Really? You think you, I thought you won the national championship. Well, yeah, but I'm saying for their conference championship game, there's no way to contest them in their conference. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, I understand. I, yeah, I, that I, makes sense. I, 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 de I definitely agree with you. Yeah, yeah. USC is TS, TCU as well. I don't think anybody can really you touch know, that. You know the thing They're about – Big 12, right? Don't um, – um, yeah, TCU is Big 12. Yeah, yes. Oklahoma's not playing well. The only thing about USC is they can't finish games. That's the only thing about them. That's why they fell out the top 25. There you go. What, uh, what's your team to win the national championship? I know we don't know, but tell me who's going to win. <laughs> I know you have no idea, but tell me. <laughs> so just give an honest opinion. Who do you think? Who would you take? I give an honest opinion. You know, I will have to go with Nick Saban because he's been there. So I, I will take the Alabama Crimson Tide. What about you, Nick? Alabama. They're, well, the, they're the best team. Okay, well, as I say, my friend Daniel Taj, death to Saban. We come back, we'll talk about NBA with Cam and Vic. Stay oh, tuned. Vic's coming on. Right. I've got a job to do today. I've got a job to do today. Have a good first day at work, Mom. Your donations to Goodwill fund job training programs right in your community. Feels good to start fresh, right? Sure does. And like that, you're a job creator. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Welcome back to MCCV Extra Point. Now we're going to get right into our NBA little segment we got here with Cam and Vic. Now, um, top three teams from each conference. We got Toronto, Washington, actually my picks for the East, if we can go back three shows from now. <laughs> Chicago rounding out without D. Rose on a thing. And D. Rose had some comments to say the other week, uh, or a couple days ago. What was that? Oh, yeah, he was, uh, you know, he made some, it wasn't politically correct how uh, he projected his feelings about his health after basketball, going into old age, you know, he's, yeah, he was asked about when he sits out certain games that it's possible for him to play, you know, why does he sit out? And, you know, his comments were, you know, something along the lines of, I'm thinking about my future. I don't want to be a old man that's hurt. And he's getting a lot of ridicule for it because, you know, these guys are million dollar athletes. You shouldn't not play as hard as you can because of, possible injury or long-term, you know, concern about injuries. Plus, even when you get older, you're going to have the best medicine money you can buy to help those injuries right? because of how much money you have. But that's uh, that's up to speculation of what you think. Uh, rookie uh, Aaron Gordon Orlando goes out and definitely with a foot injury. Corey Brewer uh, going off injuries. Corey Brewer from Minnesota is looking to the Cavaliers or Houston, the swing man from Minnesota. So that would be interesting to see if one of them grabs him and they make a playoff push. Um, you got Cleveland finally turns it around, five and three now, a couple wins. Uh, it's a little incentive to look at Cleveland, and then the Knicks and the Sixers, nice to round out from our tri-state area, three and eight and zero oh and nine. D 
doing exactly what they're supposed to do is lose. Yeah, you know, I don't know what's <laughs> going on with those uh, organizations. People, uh, the fans are starting to be really frustrated with them because, you know, it's year in now and year out, same thing. I feel like with the, uh, with the Cavaliers, though, there's nothing to worry about when it comes playoff time. We all know LeBron James shows up, so I think their record right now is, is irrelevant to anything that's going on. You know, I, I, I still don't think the Cavs are going to win 60 games this season. I could see them winning maybe 54, 55 games. They'll still be in the playoffs, though. They'll yeah, still be in the playoffs. And that's what truly matters. Moving over to the West, which is Cam's more expertise, as he likes to stay away from our home teams. we got Memphis, Houston, and Golden State all 1, 2, 3, 9, and 1, 9, and 1, 8, and 2. I had Golden State projected to win. Memphis has shocked everyone. So let's keep that going. Also, the Lakers are 1 and 9. Now we're looking at the twilight of some people's careers with Tim Duncan shining and Kobe suffering. But yeah, Kobe is scoring a lot. He had 44 points in that in his last game. But the thing about the points that is irrelevant is there's no W with it. That's if true. you're if you're Kobe Bryant right now, you just made a reference to Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan has a, a squad around him of ball players mm -hmm. and everybody's expected to do the same thing. He's a star because of his longevity, but there's nobody that's treated special on that team. Kobe Bryant should not be taking 34 shots at all at this point of his career. I know we expect him to make a great comeback, and you know people expect him to score this much, but he shouldn't be shooting this much. You're supposed to have a, a supporting cast around you at this point, and when you're doing that, it just seems like you're forcing it, and you're still not getting any wins. What do you want to do? You're not going to score... Uh, now he's, he's padding stats for his retirement. Yeah, I don't know what to say. Uh, Cam, give me one something to look forward to in the next couple of weeks for the NBA. Uh, you know, it's tough. Would it know? be Would it be uh, OKC? Okay, OKC, okay, so you know, with 3-8 and eight right now, you know, you know, uh, uh, Russell Westbrook, he's going to be out for another two to three weeks. Kevin Durant, you know, they're probably penciling him for a January 2nd return, you know, with that injured pinky toe. As, um, Very manly know. injury. <laughs> But you know, it's this um, NBA um, Western Conference. You know, it's shaping up. It's um, really shaping up to be pretty interesting. You know, you got the Houston Rockets. They're nine and one. Memphis Grizzlies are nine and one. You know, everybody thought the Grizzlies took a, um, actually took a step back, and you know, um, people thought the Dallas Mavericks took a step up with the acquisition of Chandler Parsons. So I'm really anxious to see who's going to um, be the challenger when it comes playoff time to challenge the. Um, San Antonio Spurs, actually. Yeah, that's the only exciting thing about basketball. Mm -hmm. Just waiting for people to come back from injury in time for, you know, the playoffs. So that's a that's one of the exciting things to look forward to. Well, that's true. You guys stay right there. One more uh, thing, NBA, for the Christmas jerseys, as they do something different every year, the first names of players will be on the backs of their jerseys, which I don't know if that really strikes anything with you. But these guys will be right back. We're talking about some NFL and this uh, crazy uh, weekend we had. Stay tuned. spend eight minutes decorating their little brother. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Up, college is hard, down, those books are heavy. My sport is football, but my passion is education. Right so every year I take promising high schoolers on a college tour to show them that higher education means a brighter future. My name is Namdi Asamoa. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. You can be a reader, tutor, or mentor too. Take the pledge at liveunited.org slash volunteer. Do you wear this? Welcome back to MCTV Extra Point for our NFL segment with Cam and Vic. So, guys, I'm going to get right to my most personal problem this week. Oh, man. The Green Bay Packers against the Philadelphia Eagles. 20, well, 53 to 20. Aaron Rodgers just looks great. But the three defense, three, three defense special teams touchdowns for the Packers was really the killer. And the Eagles secondary. I really didn't, you really watched the game. You really didn't see Mark Sanchez really struggle that bad. Shady still has 88 yards. Yeah. And he, but Sanchez has two picks, but really he gets sacked three times. He fumbles the ball three times. The, the only factor about LaShawn McCoy's production on um, um, yesterday is, I mean, excuse me, on Sunday is he had 3.8 
you know, has a carry on 23 carries. You know, he has to get better. We have to get better production out of LaShawn McCoy in that offense. You know, he's set up to do well in Chip Kelly's system. You know, he ha we have to get better production out of him. I agree with that. But I think also the receivers are doing a uh, fairly decent job. So it's not like the lack of running, you know, is actually killing the team in any sort of way. It probably would help. But... <laughs> It's not the problem. The problem is the secondary, like you said. Exactly. And the funny thing about the secondary is you got Jordy Nelson, who gets four <coughs> catches, 109 yards, and a touchdown, mm -hmm. but he gets targeted 10 times. So that means Kerry Williams, whoever's out there, they, they'd stop. I mean, maybe Aaron Rodgers overthrows, whatever, but six times Jordan, Jordan Nelson was thrown to, they were stopped, which is, I think, so, not signs of improvement, but signs of something nice to come, maybe. Take it as like an improvement and just walk away with the loss is what you can. Randall Cobb, Jordy looked great. Casey Matt, I mean Clay Matthews comes out five total tackles, a sack, pass deflection, hits Sanchez twice, and then you got Jordan Matthews and Macklin, um, both uh, 200 yards rushing or 200 yards receiving to total, two touchdowns and 14 receptions. Good game from them. It was just they just couldn't do it on defense. They had five. Also, they had five total turnovers on offense. You know, yeah. going back to Mark Sanchez, it's not like he had a bad game. You know, I believe his quarterback rating was up in the 80s. So it was, it was like 80, 80 points. So it's not like he performed on a bad level. He had a productive game. I believe it just falls back on that Philadelphia Eagles secondary. Yeah, that's really. They what have it is. to perform better. And also, every you watched Sunday. The, you watched the front seven, which is good for the Eagles and defense, but. The pr they didn't do pressure because they were worried about the secondary. No, Aaron, but Mark, yeah. linebackers Aaron Rodgers coverage. had too much time well, you, to Aaron, get everything Aaron Rodgers together. Aaron going to make plays, yeah. Yeah. and you have to be able to beat him out like that, and I don't think they did. But uh, next week you got Green Bay against at Minnesota, which I think will be light work for them, but who knows in the division game, Eagles versus Tennessee. It's a must win because you're Eagles and they're Tennessee. So mm -hmm. we'll see how that goes. Moving down to another surprising, which is not really surprising, I took the Bengals. But the Bengals beat the Saints outright at home, 27 to 10. Uh, Andy Dalton still like under 250 yards, with, but he has three touchdowns. Jeremy Hill, 27 carries, 152 yards, and then AJ Green does his uh, does what he does on offense. I Drew think Brees, oh, what's, sorry. what's wrong with the Saints right now is the fact that you know they only had this home thing going, and then once that got taken away last week by San Francisco, it was just it's just like the same thing that happened to the Seahawks. Once a team does the unexpected to a team that's expected to triumph, it's just it's downhill from there. You know, it's, it's nothing nothing good is going to come from it because now there's two losses at home back to back. That was all you had going for you. <coughs> but they also have that division going for them, and they're still leading with four and six tied yeah. with Atlanta. You go over to Mark Ingram rushes 23 times for 67 yards. Drew Brees looked great. He didn't throw a pick. He, uh, he, he only missed 12 throws out of 41, and he had two, but he just 255 yards. I really think it's their defense in that run game. If that run game doesn't get going, they're, they're not a good team, no. and their defense no. is not good. And Jerry Spurrier was the wrong pick to take when they could have got line help or linebacker help. Jerry Spurrier was a waste of money, and they also lose Malcolm Jenkins and Darren Sproles to the Eagles by t doing that Jerry Spurrier thing. I think it was wrong no. for them. Drew, Drew Brees, he is missing Darren Sproles yeah. right about now. But Brandon Cooks is showing some Any life. Any team would be missing but Darren Sproles. You got the Cincinnati the missing at Houston, yeah. and uh, New Orleans playing a tough team in Baltimore. So I think New Orleans is about to have another loss next week. But yeah. we're just going to move on. The biggest surprise yesterday was the Rams beating the Broncos 22-7. to It was at, it was at home, though, for the Rams. But still, Sean Hill comes out for another start, and they sit Austin Davis. 20 for 29, one touchdown, sacked three times. And Trey Mason, the story, 29 carries, 113 yards. I think the, uh, the issue is people underestimate the Rams because with that upset yesterday, that, that made them uh, – they, they won over the two teams that were in last year's Super Bowl, yes. which says something about their team, even though it's really insignificant right now. But that means if they were to face those two teams, you know, in the Super Bowl, would it have been the same type of game? That's just for speculation purposes. But I think if you're the Broncos, you were supposed to win that game, regardless of if it was a home game for the Rams or not. There's uh, only a shaky moment that we think about the Broncos is when they're playing uh, Tom Brady or something like that. Like, you know, maybe they're going to win, maybe not. Otherwise. This one was supposed to be a different, especially with the loss being a one-touchdown game. I think that's the... 
thing we have to take away from this. It wasn't just the fact that they lost. They didn't put up their usual yeah, amount. Put up seven. Exactly. And that's a, that's almost a shutout in a sense. Well, you got some interesting stuff here. You got C.J. Anderson, the uh, their now leading rusher, uh, nine carries for 29 yards. I think that's just dreadful. If you don't have a running game, you're not going to win. All the teams that lose yeah. don't they have They were any four and 12 game. on third down, and they had eight pounds for 62 yards. I, you really can't. I mean, I don't care who you are. You could be, you could be the Vikings. You're not beating the team if you're going to play like that against them. The Rams are going to take on San Diego at San Diego, so I don't know. At, that game is a toss up. But the Denver's go, playing at home against the Dolphins. I'm sure they're going to smack them around in a nice statement game back like they always do. But um, it's really, it's, it's really dis disconcerting how every team d there's no definite. No. As our other analyst Nick said, there's no definites out there. And sure, the, p the position players can do whatever, but then that the defensive line, offensive line, running back stuff, it's just it's the real problem. The secondaries, all it's all. I think it really all lies on the defense when you need to win. Uh, let's move on to the Sunday night game. We've got the Patriots 42 over the Colts 20. Tom Brady doesn't look that good, and then they have this guy Jonas Gray, 38 carries, 198 yards, four touchdowns. Yeah, those are Madden stats. I think. Uh, you know, just like you just said, you can't get the running game going. You're not going to win. Now, compare those stats. 14 carries, 4 yards. Yeah. So, I mean, that's not even it's not even a comparison to make. It, it's not even in the same bracket of conversation. Andrew Luck had more rushing yards than both his, both yeah. his running backs. Exactly. And that's, you're not going to get anything going like that. when You uh, you can throw the ball as many times as you want because Andrew Luck only threw one pick. So, it wasn't like he played horribly. No, but he played fine. It's just you can't force anything in any sport, in any league. It's just not going to work. Everything has to be moving. The whole team has to be playing as a unit for anything to, to go for you. So I think everybody expected them to lose this. Oh, I picked New England, uh, but I, I did not pick the Rams. That's no. for sure. Yeah, everybody expected them to lose this, but just like the difference with the Rams being home and were expected to lose, they Cold. won. And the Colts was, they were home and expected to lose and they lost. So, you know, it's uh, you know what I think it came down to? I think it came down to the Colts' inability to stop the run. You yeah, know. well, that, just yeah. for sure, it wasn't. It was like a jugular. You know, it wasn't. Yeah, it, it, wasn't, wasn't it wasn't. wasn't bleeding a little bit. It was bursting. It, it, was, it was. It was. It was bleeding eternally yeah. all night long for for the um, for the Indianapolis Colts. And everyone, it's just another another defensive crumble. New England just it seems whoever stops playing good or stops, has a bad game, the other person picks up. Yeah, it's yeah. just. It's, like, it's I don't think Shane Green. Shane Green wanted to hit the holes like Jonas Gray did, but he's not their starter. Another little interesting thing. Um, Kostowski, perfect still, like perfect again from the from kicking. He's, I think he's the best kicker in the league. But you can you can have those are factors that. that play into wins as well because you can't have guys missing twenty three yard uh, field no. goals no, and you expect your team to you know win any championships. Even when they <laughs> win outright, he's always good, which is great. Um, that's all we have for NFL. It's a really weird week. The Thursday night game is Oakland at Kansas City or vice versa. I don't know. But when we come back, we're going to talk with Mike for the NASCAR Overdrive with the final segment because NASCAR is over. Champion was crowned. Stay tuned. Welcome back to MCTV Extra Point. Now with uh, Mike with our final installment of the 2014 NASCAR Spring Cup Series Edition Overdrive. Well, so who won last night at Homestead? Well... Final race of the year. Final chance for these guys to get a win. Harvick came out on top, and with that win, he gets the 2014 NASCAR Spring Cup Series Championship, his first championship in his first year with Stuart Haas Racing. First time since 1974 when Richard Petty did it in his own team, with his own team at Petty Enterprises, and with a new crew chief, no doubt, in Rodney Childers. First time that's happened in 40 years. It's very interesting. Uh, I hear that the guy second in the standings came second in the race. Yeah, Ryan Newman pulled a dirty move on Kyle Larson last week in Phoenix. Unfortunately, he paid the price for it with a second place finish at Homestead, second to the champion Kevin Harvick. Yeah, there's no there's no gold for second place, is there? Nothing no. for second place. No, nobody wants to win that. I heard Harvick had led 54 laps. And uh, is this his first championship ever? First championship ever. He had numerous chances over at Richard Childress Racing, but after 12 years there, 
he decided to pack it in at RCR, move over to Stuart Haas Racing in what was essentially a driver trade. Harvick went to Stuart Haas Racing, while Ryan Newman, who, who was in Harvick's current ride at SHR, went over to Childress Racing to drive the 31 car. That's a little bad blood there. Mm. Now, Jeff Gordon, my, my fan favorite, a lot of people's fan favorite, um, came in 10th behind his teammate, Jimmy Johnson. And you said he had a, a pit stop that was uh, ill-advised. It was an interesting call by crew chief Alan Gustafson to bring in his driver, Jeff Gordon, with three to go on the, on the ensuing restart, coming to, coming to the ensuing restart. Gotta wonder what happened on that last restart to bring up that call. Was it either a flat tire from contact with the 11 car of Hamlin, or did Alan Gustafson see something that we viewers at home did not see? Well, that's very interesting. Any, um, like give me your, what's to look forward to for next year? What's like your biggest, your biggest thing you're gonna look for? The biggest thing that I'm gonna look for is, well, 20, not only the new TV contracts with Fox and NBC, but also how these new driver lineups are going to shake up. We're going to be seeing Trevor Bain in the return of the sixth car for Roush Fenway Racing. Also going to be seeing IndyCar Series alum Sam Hornish Jr. in the nine car, which was vacated by Marcus Ambrose after last night in Homestead. He'll be driving the nine car as well as a, a new ride over at Joe Gibbs Racing for Carl Edwards. He's moving over from Roush Fenway to Joe Gibbs Racing to drive the 19. He lost his 99. Yeah, 99 is no more. It will oh. be replaced with the return of the 6 car. Well, there you go. We hear you first. Next week, we're going to take a look with Mike at the 2015 NASCAR scheduling, racing, team member stuff, and all that. But for here at uh, MCV Extra Point, we're going to say goodbye, and we'll see you next week. Good night, everyone.